Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Neuralink Gamer? Fancy sex parties? The Gaza Canal? Moscow Attack? <laughs> Sigma Tiger, here with you, 4K, almost every day. Missed a couple days last week to help, to help. <laughs> I had to help my mom move some furniture, and Friday, the wife was sick. So guess what? Sigma Tiger was at a commish. But guess what? Today, we got some hot takes. What do we got going on here? Well, guess what? You'll never believe it, but the first human to receive a Neuralink implant says it lets him play Civilization VI. Well... Last time I heard it was Civilization 4, so I must have been out of the video games for a while, especially those. 29-year-old Nolan Arbo, a quadriplegic, says the brain implant has allowed him to play chess and Civilization on his PC using his mind. I'm so freaking lucky to be part of this, he says. There's an image of him, and he's playing some chess there. The first human to receive Neuralink's brain implant says it's changed his life for the better, allowing him to use a computer simply with his mind. In a live stream Wednesday, Neuralink introduced 29-year-old Nolan Arbo, a quadriplegic, who is agreed to receive the brain chip back in January. He's since been using the implant to remotely control a mouse cursor on his computer. Arbro said he lost the ability to use his limbs after a freak diving accident about eight years ago. So I'm paralyzed from below the so shoulders. He said while sitting in a wheelchair, I have no sensation or movement below my injury. Uh, as a result, it can be a struggle for him to use a computer, even with today's accessibility controllers. But during the live stream, Arbo showed that he can now tap Neuralink's implant to play a game of chess on his laptop. The implant works by reading the brain signals from the user and translating them into Bluetooth-based remote commands to control an electronic device like a mouse cursor. For Arbo, this initially involved trying to move his hands, even though he'd lost the ability to use them. So he had that like little phantom movement there. He was like, mm, trying to do it, but he was just thinking about it. Uh, from there, it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Basically, it was like using the force on a cursor, and I could get it to move wherever I wanted. He explained, referencing Star Wars. It's crazy. It's really cool. It's so cool. I'm so freaking lucky to be part of this. He added during the nine-minute live stream. Every day, it seems like we're learning new stuff. Well, congratulations to you, brother. And uh, hopefully someday you'll be able to walk, because this is what Elon believes. The response from Elon's not getting enough attention. Uh, Musk predicts Neuralink will enable the paralyzed to walk again. Long term, it is possible to shunt the signals from the brain motor cortex past the damaged part of the spine to enable people to walk again and use their arms normally. But remember, Elon is a, a madman. He's just mediocre. He's a jerk, as everyone says. But guess what? He's actually trying to help people. Okay? He developed a company that's trying to help people with their brains. I don't see anyone else doing that. Anyone else is shooting off talking about you should do this, you should do that. Well, guess what? He is doing. Elon is a doer. He's a human doing. Kate Middleton's rowing buddy is bringing fancy sex parties to America. Shh. Nobody tell the queen. Well, she's dead. So how would you tell the king? So this is from 2015. What the heck? Well, why is this doing here? When you're a duchess, you tend to have friends in high places, but one of Kate Middleton's rowing buddies is throwing posh affairs that are definitely not royal family approved. Emma Sale is the founder of Killing Kittens, an elite sex club that throws parties all over London. Sale started the business in 2005 and named it after British slang for female masturbation. After raking in more than a million last year, Sale is taking the business stateside with parties in New York, Los Angeles this year, New York Post reports. Sale and Middleton both went to Down House, an all-girls school in England, according to Daily Mail. The two of them also joined a charity rowing team. The sisterhood back to that seven to be clear. The Duchess of Cambridge hasn't checked out the sex parties, but Sale insists she knows about them and finds them amusing. She was fascinated, Sale told. Most girls are fascinated by it. The club throws parties at various locations throughout the cities and has lots of rules for its members. You have to show up in a cocktail attire and a mask. All men must come with a woman, and men can't approach women first. The club is a members only, and you only have to apply to join every... Everyone must be 18 to 50, and Sale is pretty strict about looks. It's not a case of everyone being supermodel quality. It's nice-looking people taking care of themselves, she said. For example, we might get someone who's a size 14 or 16 U.S. size, and they're massive. <laughs> 
and they send us a photo and they might be in some bondage gear and so you just say no that's not a pretty sight uh, it's not really surprising that a club marketed for the sexual elite is going to be a little problematic about the people it selects but at least it's hilarious mental image to see downtown abbey types and sex masks and anyway so yeah if you're interested in uh digging in about this it's been around for almost 10 years now uh killing kittens what the heck Kate Middleton, also, uh, in other news, she was diagnosed with cancer, so we all hope she gets well. Uh, Poland to abolish homework for primary school pupils. Students rejoice. Parents uh, probably terrified now that the woke uh, education system is going to teach their kids nothing. Compulsory graded homework will be abolished in Poland's primary schools from April. Education Minister Barbara Nowaka has announced fulfilling a pre-election election promise by her party she hopes that in future secondary school pupils will also no longer receive homework because yeah you're definitely getting enough education at school you don't need to go home and learn how to like apply yourself even a little bit more to ensure that you have learned uh yeah just send them home let them go ahead and do whatever they want because their their schedules are obviously so busy now like you know what i mean they have swimming and skating and gymnastics and ice hockey they have to do all those things and the parents have to carry them around There's no time for homework no time to learn anything actually valuable uh, she took office last month as part of the new government led by Donald Tusk. Also reiterated earlier pledges to slim down the curriculum and focus more on critical thinking, which is very important. Not learning everything by heart, as well as to reduce the number of Catholic uh, catechism classes and increase teachers' pay. Interesting. Uh, to ple the pledge to abolish homework in primary schools was included in the 100 promises announced by Tusk last September, head of election, uh, and was then included in the coalition agreement, his civic coalition KO. Uh, signed with two other groups in November, paving the way for them to form a new government. So basically, uh, he tried to get elected. He didn't get enough uh, votes. So he said, hey, you guys over there, you want to join? And we'll make like a coalition and we'll agree to govern together. And uh, we'll go ahead and remove homework. What's needed to move away from compulsory and graded homework and from the beginning of April, such regulation will be in place. So there you go. Anyone from the age of 7 to 15, homework is out of here. And school will be out for summer soon. So uh, let's go ahead and rejoice in not having to do anything in excess of things to learn, memorize at home at the expense of free time, at the expense of extracurricular activities, and the expense of meeting friends. So yeah, no reason to, to, to uh, engage in education outside of school. And uh, sometimes homework is just busy work, unless like, you know what I mean, it's important. So it's debatable. We'll keep you posted on that. Global homework might be abolished. Navy deploying ships, 260 sailors to help operate Gaza Aid Pier. Okay, so they're going to build a pier in Gaza and uh, help uh, bring in aid instead of flying it in. Hmm. Interesting. The Navy will deploy a host of logistics vessels and around 260 sailors to help operate the pier, system being spearheaded by the Army to provide millions of meals and supplies to Gaza Strip. Many Gaza residents are starving as Israel lays siege to the region after Hamas October 7 attacks on Israel. Israeli settlements and yeah if you go on Twitter and just type in like a uh, open-air market Gaza you'll see them just totally selling these rations there was also a video last week it didn't cover it because whatever some dude uh, was there opening up his rations and he was like this is all trash it's all garbage and I mean it didn't look that great it was all army food space food he said the best thing was the uh, protein bar and the cashews uh, so what's the big deal what what's the big deal they're going to go ahead and put a dock there and help people. Yeah, well, a lot of people think it might have something to do with the proposed Ben-Gurion Canal. Tied to Israeli Gaza invasion? Hmm? What? Who? Who's Ben-Gurion? Well, he was a Zionist back in the 1950s who proposed uh, building a canal to uh, take out the Suarez Canal. Over here, the Suez Canal. Basically, uh, that's how everything gets into the Mediterranean Sea. Right? Well, he's thinking about putting a new canal in. So what's the deal? All right. In the past several years, interest has revived in the Ben-Gurion Canal, a proposed alternative to the Suez Canal, named after Israelis, Israel's founding father, running through Israel close to Gaza, creating an incentive for removal of Palestinians from Gaza. Particularly the North End, it has raised suspicions that Israel had foreknowledge of Hamas's October 7th attacks and let it happen so they could punch forward with this, separating the earth and allowing water to flow and then building a, uh, a lock system so they can have boats and ships flow through. It's now been documented that 
Israel received multiple warnings something was about to occur. New York Times reported that Israeli officials obtained detailed knowledge of attacks plans a year before. Egyptian intelligence made repeated warnings as October 7th approached that a major event was about to take place. Whether or not these facts offer definitive proof that elements of Israeli governments knew something was going on the way, the new interest in creating an alternative to one of the world's most important east-west transit points has raised questions as the accompanying map shows the Mediterranean end of the canal would run close to the northern boundary of Gaza. Obviously, a situation where shipping was subject to rocket attacks would make that unattainable. And so the attacks at the southern entrance of the Red Sea have proved. So, what's happening here, okay? You know, uh, the Houthis are shutting down that trade route. So, you know, why don't we just create a new one? We'll eliminate the uh, Palestinian problem that we have. This is Israel speaking. And uh, we'll go ahead and benefit all of these countries like Canada, the U.S., China, perhaps, and will uh, benefit massively. But guess what? Egypt probably wouldn't like that. They'll probably lose some money on that end there. So, uh, yeah. So we'll keep you post on that. It is uh, currently what we'll call a conspiracy theory at best. Florida homeowner shares squatter eviction success story. We went the right way. And what's important about that? Well, not doing it the wrong way and losing your house to a bunch of squatters. After experiencing her own physical and financial altercations with alleged squatters on her Florida property, Democrat and homeowner Patty Peoples is finally feeling a sense of relief. We went the right way, Peoples said on the Big Money Show Tuesday, and Florida, I think, is leading the nation in this quest to approach squatters legally and not use vigilante justice, and that's the way it should be. So, what is squatters' rights? You can uh, stay on a piece of land or in a dwelling for a certain period of time. If you can prove that you're living there, making home repairs, uh, then they can't remove you. Now, uh, the reason why this was brought in is so you couldn't just evict people uh, for uh, obvious terrible reasons. Like, I want to do this to my home, so get out. I'm going to do it and then not let them back in. So it was basically like, if you're living there, you can't kick them out unless you have a reason and it would be not paying rent or damage, and then you have to bring an eviction notice with the police, and then that's served, and if they're not gone in a week, then you can go to court, and that can be dragged out for months and months and months without receiving any rent on your property and the people living there doing whatever they want. So House Bill 621 permits police to remove squatters without a lease authorized by the property owner and adds criminal penalties. Excellent. Landlords under the current law typically have to wade through a long and expansive legal process to remove squatters. Absolutely horrible. It uh, gives police the ability to immediately evict squatters. That does not exist in most states because they are treated as a civil matter. It is also charges squatters with a misdemeanor for squatting and presenting a false lease. And furthermore, it's a felony for them to do 1,000 or more damage to the property. Congratulations, Ron DeSantis. Well done. Let's shut out these squatters. Thriving How to Squat Internet Forums Reveal uh, Home Takeover Secrets. You can't stop it. We had this individual uh, from uh, Twitter or TikTok there last week shooting off about how uh, he's going to get his gangs and they're coming up to get that return. There's nothing we can do about it. They're going to be seizing homes. Well, he's got banned on uh, TikTok. Great. Good job, TikTok. And uh, thousands of homes across America are being invaded by squatters. We've covered this. So I mean, this jerk is gone, uh, but there's Chinese ones on TikTok telling you how to get up through uh, California, how to get through Eagle Pass, literally like step by step which different places to stop to make sure you get your cell phone minutes topped up, get a UN-based prepaid visa, all the way up from Panama through uh, Central America right to the border. And uh, yeah, it's all over the gaff. Once occupation artists said they place a uh, for sale rent sign on a property with phone number attached to a burner cell phone, if there's no response, then the home is unmonitored, prime for possession. So yeah, they just go ahead and knock on the door. Anybody home? Wait a week, come back, check, knock, knock, no one's there, let's go in, let's take over. Uh, so there it is. Keep an eye on your houses, people, because there's squatters all over the gaff. So what's the deal? The UN Security Council passed a resolution demanding immediately Gaza ceasefire. Okay, breaking. Moscow Concert Hall attack, so if you don't know what's going on, uh, Moscow was attacked over the weekend, and they returned uh, and began attacking Kiev because they believe that they allowed these terrorists up through their ISIL, ISIL-K, uh, part of ISIS. Uh, so let's see. Deadly attack in Moscow claimed by ISIL affiliate leaves more than 133 people dead and approximately 100 injured. As you can see the damage and destruction there, the facade of the Krakas City Hall. 
uh, concert venue following Friday's deadly attack. More than 133 people have been killed and more than 100 others were injured following a brazen attack on concertgoers in Moscow, Crocus City Hall before a performance by Soviet-era rock band on Friday. Assailants dressed in camouflage uniforms opened fire and reportedly threw explosive devices inside the concert venue, which left in flames with its roof collapsing after the deadly attack. 11 people have been detained, including four people directly involved in the armed assault, and uh, Russia tortured them and brought them into court today, literally in a, a gurney, like, wrapped up. Apparently, allegedly, they were uh, uh, torturing the man with electricity to the genitals. Uh, there are some pictures online if you do care to go have a look. The group remains one of the most active affiliates of ISIL and takes its title from an ancient cellophate in the region that once encumbered areas of Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan, and Turkmenistan. So what the heck? I thought Trump beat these guys. Well, he did. The cellophate. But, uh, of course, bands of them kept up and they re-amalgamated into uh, another terrorist organization uh, once Biden uh, pulled the chute on Afghanistan and left them a whole bunch of weapons. He established a fearsome representation, reputation for acts of brutality. I think their ideology inspires them in terms of selecting targets. First of all, Russia is in Syria and fighting against Daesh, ISIL, like the United States. That means that they see such countries as hostile. So there it is. They're looking at uh, Russia as a uh, hostile place. And uh, they were in Iran. So guess what? We're out to get you, Russia. So not everyone uh, likes Russia, of course. Lots of people don't like Russia, the U.S., Canada. Everyone's freaking out about uh, their military incursion into Ukraine and whatever. There it is. Sigma Tiger, signing out.